And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Sounds like someone's eating a tasty wrap. It's The Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder, and all the way in Los Angeles, California, across the nation from me, is Big J Dan. Okerson. Hi, Dan. buddy. We're, just, uh, we're talking Wait, is this Dan Soder? Is this Dan Soder who's going to be at Hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio, Wednesday, June 15th? Oh! Through Sunday, June 19th? It just so happens that my summer residency in Cleveland starts this Wednesday. Well, if you want to get tickets for that, you should go to dansoder.com. That's where they're available. Oh, speaking of tickets, Jay, Skankfest tickets available at creeklic.com. That's this week. Uh, the festival will be at the Creek in the Cave in Queens, New York, the 18th and the 19th. All access passes granted you access to the big party, Big J's special premiere party, Friday. June 17th at midnight. So, yeah, that's right. Big J's one-hour special live at Webster Hall premiering this Friday, June 17th on Comedy Central. Hey, party starts. Party starts. Party starts at 10. If you want a sweet little preview, check out Big J on Unmasked with Ron Beddington, which airs also on Friday, but at 2 p.m. It's your little, uh, it's your gummer before the What an huge, amazing night. For the oh, huge rail was... of Big J. You were there, Danny. That was so great, man. Oh, Ronnie fuck. B. Can you can you say enough about Ronnie B? It was great. Jeez. What a great interview. Uh, it was super fun, man. That was really fun to watch, and I love. I always love when Ron does unmasked, <laughs> unmasked. But it was uh, it was even better watching you do it, man. Because I know how big of a fan you are and how close you guys are. It was just an awesome, awesome show. So make sure you check out Unmasked with Ron Bennington Friday, two p.m. on Raw Dog Comedy Hits ninety nine. Yeah, uh, Big J's unmasked. Fucking awesome. Hey, buddy. Absolutely. Oh, can we jump right in to take this phone call? Because I, I kicked it with this guy all weekend in Miami. Uh, uh, we got Ryan. Ryan in Miami. Merkface. Ryan. Merkface lost him. Did you lose Ryan, Merkface? Oh, hey. I'm here. Hey. Ryan. Hi, Ryan. What's up, buddy? Ryan was kicking it. What's up, buddy? How you doing, dude? Good, man. Good, dude. It was so much fun that weekend. Yeah, we hung that, out a whole that bunch. Giant, we went, uh, sorry. We went, we went bar hopping. We uh running around all these different outside. It's the most, it's the sweatiest place in the world. Yeah, Miami. Fucking Miami. Yeah, it's might as well. It's like, uh, you know, it is. it should just be renamed Sweat. Oh. Yeah, I made I made Ryan. Oh, I made Ryan turn on his own fucking uh, place where he lives. He hated it because we had to walk. Oh. I had to go do that. I did another show down in a place called Wynwood, and man, we walked around to just go like have like one more drink, and holy shit! Were you just how good did the shower feel when you got back to the hotel? Though? No shower back at the hotel. I I had Oof. to pack pretty much and leave. Wow, I thought you were staying at a hostel or something. I was like, what? You didn't have showers? I was staying at a Quality Inn, Dan. Oh, well, I apologize. It was quality. I never meant to undercut Quality Inn. I would never. Brian, did you have a blast? Yeah, man, dude, that big uh, cigar we smoked was pretty nice. Oh, yeah, man, they had a, That's what... a joint rolled up. It was like a tree trunk. Oh, wow. Yeah, a branch, I think you called it. Yeah, it was pretty bonkers. Was Jacob there? Which oh. night was Jacob there? Jacob came that night, but he, uh, no, Jacob left before the ceremonious <laughs> tree trunk tr uh, smoking. Okay. It was, uh, what were you saying, Ryan? I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, sorry, man. Funniest thing you probably said all weekend was when Rob came down. You're like, could you look any more like an abusive stepfather in his wife? Yeah, Rob May. Rob May was all covered in tattoos. Rob May was opening for me. He's all covered in tattoos, and he just comes to hang out in like uh, like underwear. He wears like boxer briefs and uh, tank top. Very what? comfortable that Rob May. You wait. He came outside to hang out in public in, in boxer briefs and a tank top, or just yeah, like we, in the hotel room. Yeah, we went back to the hotel. Okay, and then uh, uh, about a half hour or so after we got back to the hotel, uh, like the Mike, the owner, and his girlfriend D, and everybody kind of came back, including Ryan, back to the hotel just to kind of hang out and bullshit for a few more, have a few drinks outside. And um, Rob came down, like I told Rob to come down, and Rob came down, like yeah, literally wearing underwear, underwear huh. and a tank top. That's almost like bizarre, that's b bizarre behavior. That's a very seduction outfit. Like, oh, yeah. I thought we were just going to come over and hang out. I mean, for a bunch of dudes and one guy's girlfriend, Oof. yes, that was a lot. He's putting his girlfriend right in the line of fire. Well, Ryan, I appreciate you hanging out, buddy. No worries. Um, but By the way, how good was Pinecrest Bakery? 
I never went. Never made it there. <laughs> you didn't go? No, you went right nope. to the hotel. That's right. Yeah, you got to check yeah. next time. Uh, one one quick thing for Dan. I found someone that may do as good of a savage impression as you, man. Is it Macho Impossible. Man? Joe Mangi- yeah, Joe Manganiello. Oh, uh, no, the guy from uh, Magic Mike 2. He does a decent one. I call him from True Blood. Yeah, I- He's got the muscles. That's what separates us. I think if we're going, body. I think you're going pure audio. I think I'm blowing him out. And I got hand movements on his ass. Yeah, can we? Uh, can we just give Dan this one? I mean, that guy Joe Mangiolabolo. Isn't he banging has, Sophia like, Vergara? Whatever he's doing, he's doing it with a better body than we could ever dream of having. Yeah, so let's just let Dan have this one. <laughs> yeah, he also does a good Sam Elliott. Oh, he also has a letter from Gary Soder saying that he loves him. So there's, uh, <laughs> he just got his own Comedy Central special, and he's going to call it very special. <laughs> <laughs> this special guy's just indeed. oh fuck him. Jacob just pulled up a picture of him. <laughs> fuck his Macho Man. I'm better at Macho Man than him. Have he's a gorgeous. six pack and th- he's laying dick to Sofia Vergara. Go fuck yourself. I'll do it. Well, Ryan, better- thank you. Thank you so much you for hanging out, buddy. I, no problem. I just want you to cut a promo tape, Dan. Thanks. Oh, you want me to cut a promo on Sexy Joe? I don't know. Yeah, just fucking let me see Sofia Vergara. Uh, she wants to get double teamed by two macho mans. <laughs> She's like, it's always been my dream. <laughs> and you're like, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. I call the butt. Oh, one in the pinker. Yeah. Two in the stinker. Yeah. Four holes are full. Yeah. She's like, okay. Okay. I don't know what that the is. girl's a party. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get enough. Won't get enough. Uh, uh, Ryan, thanks for calling, buddy. Um, whatchamacallit? Yeah, out in Miami, uh, my buddy Lorne, who's just... Whenever you meet a guy named Lorne, he's either handsome or successful. I've never met an uglier, uh, uglier unsuccessful I Lorne. I don't, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if he's either. Oh wow! Um, he's proven my. He might, I'm sure. He, I'm sure. I'm sure he does okay for himself, Lauren. But he, <laughs> that's, Lauren, that's such a great way of saying success. I do okay for myself. I do. I, I do. A, I, I do, do okay pretty, for myself. I'm doing all right. He um he showed up with two uh, escorts. Oh, he's starting. He's starting an escort company. Okay. Both so pretty. Your friend is was, a pimp. <laughs> yeah, Jacob. Did you get a chance to see those girls by a chance? I did not. No. You didn't notice there was two escorts floating around? Uh, this I otherwise noticed. odd quality in? I mean, smoking hot? Um, they were, yeah, they were pretty, one was wearing a dress. She had her whole shit out there. Yeah, oh, yeah without yeah. a doubt, she was hot. I, I uh, gotta the say, black I dress. Notice her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was like sitting right by the stage, but uh, with these guys. Pretty fantastic. He brings these girls, and he's like, hey, man, he goes, both these girls are, was before the show or anything, he goes, it lets me know it's my age, man. My age is smacking me. Because uh, he goes, yeah, these girls, you know, no strings attached. Man. These girls like will, will blow you before the show what? if you want. Yeah, like double beach. I almost D-beach? Jacob, Jacob, <laughs> Jacob. I was gonna turn. I was gonna throw it over to you, but oh, you were there with your. But you were there with your brother and sister in law. Oh, Jacob, Would your you family's yes? bringing you down. I, I, I might have. Yeah. Would you? Would you? you really? for, ah, God damn it, man. You blew it, yeah, Jake. I, yeah, uh, you had a coupon. My apologies. Next time we're in Miami together, buddy, you're getting your beach on me. <laughs> beach on um, me. <laughs> beach on that me. That sounds like a Randy Newman song. Be- get beach your beach on, on me. <laughs> I, you get your beach on me. <laughs> Go down to Miami. Yeah, get, yourself get yourself a beach on me. Get yourself a beach on me. I don't know. Get yourself a beach on me. Going down. To, I can't do a Randy Newman, but it's fun to try. Getting down to the south, then you have yourself a beach on me. If you're at the beach, you can't. I, can't do it. <laughs> I got a buddy named Lauren, and I'll get you a beach on me. Uh, hold on, let me hear a little Randy Newman so I can... You've got a friend you got a bee on me You got a, a bee on me You can get your bee on me <laughs> I'm sing that. Pick out your whore from the whore store And you get yourself a bee on me A friend like me will get a bee on me <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you got a bee on me Ah, uh, fuck, I, we could do that for the full two hours I'd be all right. <laughs> So you did Jacob got a bee on me I hear everybody. So they just didn't. So what did you say when they said that? So we all we hung. I hung out with them and the two dudes for a minute, and the girls were kind of given like, uh, like, so are we doing this kind of thing? And I was like, I, I just like, 
I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go on stage at some point. You know, <laughs> yeah, you just say like, things I, that are I, true. I, well, the yeah, sun yeah. comes up tomorrow. I'm like, oh, and then, and then, and then in my mind, I'm like, it's so. Weird. First of all, age, you know, and like, and by the way, in years oh, past, wait, I would have just jumped on up. You said age. Sorry. Oh, you're you're showing your maturity, not age. Maybe to some degree, because I was like, both hot chicks. Double, um, double beads. You get a, a, uh, you, look, you get a I mean, mama. I mean, I bring, you get a mama dog. That's what I call. I bring those. it up. I bring it up because I didn't do it. This is. I mean, it couldn't be more of a. I mean, not that I'm sure. I'm sure Christine wouldn't necessarily agree with this, but it's sort of a no harm, no foul in the world of like doing something behind her back. You know what I mean? It's like a yeah, an like, arrangement. You know what I mean? Like I said, your mama dog in it. Yeah, they get to so <laughs> I was on, like puppies. I was like, let's see how I feel. Maybe I was like, maybe after the show, because here's the thing: what is starting to hit me now is the like their job was to come out. Basically, I don't know if they gave them money or they were like, you know, do this; it'll be good for the company or whatever. They bullshit. They told these girls, you got a promo, you got a BJ. Yeah, maybe, him. maybe. And I was like, so I was like, maybe after the. You know, maybe after the show, because I'm like, let them see the show, because they have no idea who the fuck I am. And I'm like, maybe, you know, if they see me and they, you know, maybe they're like, oh, that guy's really funny. He's a somebody, perhaps. Like, I'll go for it. Yeah. And when the show was over, I mean, my first thought was just kind of like, how do I get out of this totally? And uh, when they came over, they gave really. My first the excuse was the one girl was eating the hot the hot dress one was wearing eating Doritos and I was like I don't want to get Dorito fingers all over my dick. <laughs> that seriously was an excuse that you used to a horse uh, face? Uh, no, no, not to her face. Oh, it was a okay. joke to, to my butt. Oh, to I more. thought you were like ah, I just I don't know, man. I don't really want Dorito dick. No, but he's like he's and he's like, dude, he's like, go for it. It's a great ad. They know they came out to do it. He's like, they want to do it. They want to do it. And I just go, this is a great line to say to two uh, to two hookers. You're letting off the hook. I go. <laughs> Ah, I go. I, I I nudge Lauren. I go. Ah, man, give him the night off. That's so, <laughs> that's so funny. Like you're a friendly TGIF Fridays manager. Hey, by the yeah. way, <laughs> book's low tonight. Why don't you go home? You know what? Get out of here, you scamp. Hey, I know you guys don't want to suck on my sweaty balls from being on stage for an hour. Take I, the night off. It's just, it's just with what they do. Like one of them was telling something about her niece falling earlier that day and like <sighs> scraping her knee or something, and the other one was talking about her three-year-old kid. And I'm just like, hey, man, this is like I, I'm a little checked out of that seedy underworld, man. And I don't, and that doesn't have, that's got nothing to do with threesomes or anything like that. It's a different thing that that is. Like the the world of like the escorts and the, and then it turns into. I'm sure there's drugs involved well, somewhere. Is it, it, just, is it, it them it's, it's showing? Is it them showing the humanity? Like talking about their daughter and their needs? No, just, at no point of it. At no outside of the idea, initial idea being presented, being like, and you see the girls, and you're like, whoa, that's they're pretty hot. Right away, I didn't have any where it's like. Should I? Maybe I will. Maybe. It was just like a complete, uh, 100% like, ah, no. dude, this is, yeah. And then I was like, but I really, I genuinely was like, I'll see how I feel after the show. Maybe after the show, if the girls were like, you were so funny and that was, you know, like, you know, let's go to your room and blah, blah, blah. But it, what, they were just kind of waiting for me to give the word of what they were told to do. Oh, yeah. And I just not, wasn't into it. Yeah. yeah, that's not, that's not hot. That's not erotic. The two dudes were back. Also, it was like, the thing is, like, those two dudes were going to be waiting for them in some way. The whole thing was weird. And just kind of like, so how was it? And then you get the beauty of being able to call, like, I get to call Christine then and be like, you know, it's like, I did some fantastic boyfriending. Today. Yeah, you get a gold star. Yeah, it's like, I could have told you nothing and just did it. Instead, I didn't do it, and I'm telling you, look what I turned down. How fun was that? That is. That's a, you know. What's that, Jacob? I, I changed my mind. That would have freaked me out. I would have. I probably would have chickened out. You would have chickened out? Yeah. Why? Why do you think? Well, first of all, it, I, I'm a bit of a germaphobe. <laughs> a, bit. a bit? A bit? Well, Andy and, and, and plus, Lou both yeah, just laughed at his bad. face when he said a bit of a germaphobe. Which Jacob, means, better fantasy. Jacob, you're a bit, everything you are, you're a bit of. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jacob would have to wear, you'd have to wear like a poncho, a condom, <laughs> a hazmat suit on top of it. Yeah, I don't know if it was going to be a condom beach or a raw beach. I don't know, but they, they would have probably done whatever you wanted. I'm sorry, Jacob. I should have thrown that over to you, buddy. No, I thought about I, that. I think you saved Jacob in an awkward situation. Yeah. I think he knows himself. No, he could have gotten his peg, uh, his peg washed for him. Well, that would have been nice. Once they start bringing up the kid, though, 
or get it. That's a good. That wouldn't happen in front. That wouldn't happen in front of you. That happened because I just kind of kept conversation as like benign as possible. Oh, okay. I was going to say that's a great technique from an escort is just to bring up your family and personal shit. And the guy's like, uh, uh, I can't fuck you. I'm like, well, I got a nice dinner. We went out. Yeah, like, What's going on? He goes, ah, nothing. I've just been in the hospital all day. My father's dying. Yeah. Anyway, oh. we going to do this or what? So you want to go ass to mouth or just oral? <laughs> what's going on? You're like, ah, uh, you know what's funny? My dad gave me his ATM. Speaking of ass to mouth, my father gave me his ATM card and said, "Go pull." You're like, I can't do this. He said, "Take out whatever you want because he just knows his days are numbered." Yeah. Anyway, uh, fingers in the butt are okay. No dicks in the butt. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, safe word is Montana. So we <laughs> will move forward. Uh, Kissing is going to cost you a little extra. And also, my aunt's diabetic. We just found out she might lose a leg. Uh, I kind of bummed <laughs> out about it. Anyways, do you want me on my back or on my stomach? <laughs> so I'm getting evicted here. You know, times just rough, and they keep raising the rent, and it's just not able to afford it anymore. Um, anywho, uh, you could lay it on my face. You could lay it on my tits, just not inside me, please. It's odd. They say you don't get memories until you're four, but I remember at two being left at the orphanage by my parents. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I'll suck you off in the bathroom, then we fuck on the bed. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I, just don't, I don't feel comfortable doing this. Ah, that's a shame. If you're thinking you want to eat my pussy, let me just say I wouldn't. Um, because... <laughs> that's a bang-only territory, you know what I mean, Hoss? Huh? That is Comanche territory. <laughs> Unless you want to taste a rainbow of different sized condoms from today's work. <laughs> Woo! I have taken a beating. That's like kissing. That's like kissing a boxer on the forehead in the twelfth round. It's just going to be Dude, locked I, up. I bet Miami pussy. If you're not getting it straight from fucking shower to bar to home, oh, because like the if, humidity. It, 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 I mean, I bet it's. I bet it. It is sour. What do you think I is bet worse? It is do you think sour? Yeah, that is. That's that's a that's a Miami now and later. <laughs> Where you're like, you're like, I don't know if I want it now. I'm gonna have it later. That's too sour. You can, oh, but, yeah, I bet it's sour. What do you think's worse, bottom of the balls or vagina in Miami? Vagina. I don't know, man. I think, yeah, you're right, because it's kind of kempt inside like a greenhouse, whereas balls are just just out yeah, there. Yeah, really. Yeah, it really stews, but the balls are just like, you know, sweaty balls. If you, I feel like opening you, a pussy in you, Miami is like when you open a car door on a really hot day. It just, uh, it's, it just, you can just see the heat on the sidewalk. Just, oh, wet. oh, yeah. <laughs> like the, the pussy's all hazy. Yeah. It's Miami pussy has heat haze. Looks like when Kung Fu was walking over the ridge. Yeah, exactly. With the VO from it from David Carradine. Uh, yeah. I walked to the beach that day. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I bet it is. I bet the hus down there is rank. <laughs> I, it's gotta be. It's the ultimate evener, though, because there's such hot chicks down there that, I, that yes. you know that's what's gotta be wrong. Is their pussy's gotta be sour. That's nature. That's Darwinism at its finest, my friend. But that's where you want. Uh, that's where you want a bald sniz, though. If any anywhere in the world, that's where you want it. Dude, last night in L.A., I, I'm, I'm wearing. You know, I, I wore a hoodie. It's it gets nice and cool at night. Love that. Earth's dying. Love it. It's just a uh, man, but Miami, there is just no. I can't take. There's it. no reprieve. Southern humidity. Uh, when I did the South Beach Comedy Festival in 2012, when I was all fat and had long hair, because I was I was alcoholic fat. Uh, it was the worst I've ever felt in my back life. In your, back in your J day. <laughs> hey, no, no, it was your. Uh, your weight is always way more pleasant than mine. Mine was just flat out alcoholic weight, so it was just sad. <laughs> it was just like there was like a little puffiness to it that you knew wasn't that was caused by poison. Uh, but being in Miami was terrible. And I was just sweating so much. You sweat yeah. in weird places. Your belly button sweats in Miami. Mine oh, the whole. My back, like my, my lower back. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it's awesome. So bad. Just lower back sweat is the it's worst. It's so funny because I find lower. If I'm at the, if I see a girl with like um, a sports bra or a midriff, where you can see her torso, and I see lower back sweat, I'm like, that's so sexy. And on a guy, you're like, how animalistic. Oh yeah, you piece of shit. Yeah, Go you, towel yourself off, you animal. You zoo animal. It's just fucking sweaty. I was sweating. I was at a uh, Bonnaroo all weekend. So I just had the mix of regular sweats and drug sweats. So it was fun. You kind of what drugs like, were you taking? Oh, uh, we I, I went with the Ari Shafir. So there was a, a little, mushrooms, of course. Of course, did some Molly, which I had never done before. Did you? Yeah. 
What I, happened? I you, get you it. You fuck a totem pole or something? <laughs> yeah. I jerked off on a banister. Um, I saw LCD sound system for the first time on Molly, and it was very good. So now I don't oh, know yeah. if the music was great or if the drugs were just that great. I have to guess that's the Molly. What did it make you feel? What is it? Just love. I just wanted to fucking hug everybody. But it, was, it, was, it wasn't oh, sexual. Oh, I'm having flashbacks. Uh, no, I really like... It, there wasn't a section. There was like a little bit of like... My dick was definitely there, but I wasn't like horny. I was like just... It, I was just loving everybody. Yeah? Yeah. It was just great. It was just Did you see any weird stuff? Any <laughs> naked chicks running oh, around? Oh, so, mu- so many festival titties. Uh, a lot really? of festival titties, which are usually kind of gross. Because they're uh, they're not the ones you want to see, but the great thing is no, this- they are. They got those. They got, they're always have, they're like painted, and they they have those banana. T- I like music with banana tits. Yeah. That's the kind of tits I like for my music. Yeah, we've talked about that. Like some doors. Like, you where got a picture- am I? You got a picture with Eddie Vedder that I loved because it looks like you're just like you don't even care. You're just showing Lou. Like, look, Lou, look how easy this is. Yeah, hey, Lou, I don't even. You know what I did? I pushed him away after this picture. Uh, no, I was high as shit uh, on marijuana, but it was very like, well, hey, smile. I, it's like I forgot how to smile because I was stoned. I was like, how do you smile? You smile like this. Did uh, you tell him that your friend is the biggest fan? Uh, I kind of kept it short and sweet. I talked to him for a little bit, and he was very nice. And then I was like, hey, man, can I have a picture? And he was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, very- Vetter. Hey, hey, Vetter, I'm pro-choice. Can I grab a picture real quick? Hey, what's up, dude? All lives matter. I'm a big gun nut. So, <laughs> can I get this pic? What up, buddy? North Carolina nailed it on that law, huh? <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> I believe... I believe a woman has the right to choose. Hey, let's grab a quick pick real quick. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Um, no, it was, uh, yeah, you just say the most conservative things you can to Eddie right before the picture. Also, George W. Bush was the best president of all time. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> Smile. Did you run into him outside like the food tent? Is that what it was? Uh, comedy. He, he was on Judd Apatow's show with Pete Davidson and Vanessa Bayer. So he was uh, he was hanging out at the comedy tent. Remember last year when we were there and John Hamm and Zach Galifianakis just showed up? Yeah. It was like that, where all of a sudden just Eddie Vedder was hanging out. And Jason Which? Mraz. So my apologies oh. to Jason Mraz for not asking for a photo, but, you know. Yeah, you're all right. You get it. I get it. Was he wearing the hat? He he was wearing a cow. Uh, he was wearing a baseball hat. He was very nice. Yes. I didn't yeah, know it well, was what's, him before he left. Does his music? Does his music make you think he's going to be a raging asshole? Yes. I mean, it I kind it of always be... think opposite. I think like whatever kind of music you do, I always feel like you're the opposite. Because I've met what's so many Jason Mraz song. I don't know, but I've met so many metal guys that are so nice. That you're like, oh, and then I've met a couple like pop people that suck asshole. <laughs> is this Jason Mraz? Yeah, this is the song, right? Yeah. This sounds like a Nissan commercial. Buck Soder's Nissan. Back a bit. I bet it wasn't a Nissan commercial. This summer, Buck Soder's Nissan. Come down, get a Passat. My penis is soft when I have sex. So that way it's not threatening. Before the cool down. Yeah, usually, and you're like, so it's kind of redundant to be like, uh, Jason Mraz is actually a pretty cool guy. You never hear this. He goes, yeah, he, he closed on this song. They went backstage. I started yelling nigger and punched a woman. It was insane. He almost <laughs> has like, no filter. What? Yeah. Holy shit, what? Yeah, he's satanic pretty openly about it. <laughs> yeah. He uh, he says Jesus was a fag, which is weird because he says it with so much venom. He told me his girlfriend was pregnant, then he kicked her down a flight of stairs. Actually, he dragged dragged her back up, kicked her back down. And that whole story took five minutes because he was laughing so hard about it. Can we get a hashtag hashtag started, fake Jason Mraz rumors? Yes, (laughs) absolutely. If you're a camper, start fake Jason Mraz rumors. Like (laughs) the time I heard he walked into an orphanage, adopted all the kids, then took them to a worse orphanage (laughs) and gave them up for adoption. He, th- he thumbs up the Pulse nightclub, uh, the Pulse nightclub shooters uh, Twitter. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> he, he liked it. He favorited his tweets. Go- we should call it going Mraz. 
<laughs> uh, guys, I feel like I'm really going Mraz right now. Hashtag I'm about, going to, I'm about to go Mraz on this bitch. <laughs> so I'm in, I'm in, I'm in traffic, right? And this lady won't stop harking. So I go full Mraz. I get out of my car, <laughs> pull her out of her window by her hair, kick her face in in front of her kids. Full Mraz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're crying. I go in there. I go. You guys want some tears? And I peed on all our kids' faces. Yeah. I mean, full tilt Mraz on these assholes. <laughs> So I'm at the grocery store. This old lady is just taking forever. I pick up the rest of her groceries and throw them out of line and go, go get them, you old bag of dicks. We're full <laughs> so this uh, lady she's homeless, she's older. You can see she just has full-blown dementia at this point. She asked me for a nickel. I go, a nickel? Stuffed my ball sack in her face. Gave her a, a Roman soldier helmet with my cock right between her eyes. I mean, just out, outwardly went miraz on this bitch. Yeah, I'm at a Mets game. Uh, this was crazy. They, like, hit a foul ball near me. This, uh, this mentally uh, handicapped boy picks up the ball, right? And I just get filled with such jealous rage that I drop kick him from behind. His dad comes over, knock him out in one punch, take the ball, stand up and yell out, Raz! Uh, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's halftime of a Sixers game. <laughs> they bring out these two Down Syndrome kids to do layup drills. <laughs> I can't take any more. I go down there, I kick them both in their exact same faces. I mean, just full Full blown Mraz on these two tards. <laughs> oh man, it's going Mraz, going full Mraz. <laughs> um, Fake Mraz rumors, and don't forget to start. Uh, don't forget to get your tickets available now for Skankfest CreekLIC.com. The festival is this week. It's actually starting tomorrow with all the pre stuff. But buy your tickets for the f the real festival, June eighteenth and nineteenth. And if you get all access passes. Then you get access to Big J's special premiere party this Friday at midnight. Win his one-hour special live at Webster Hall premieres on Comedy Central. So if you're not in the New York area, set your DVRs to watch Big but, J. Okerson live at Webster Hall. Well, especially if you're in Cleveland, make sure you set your DVRs because you're going to be watching Dan Soder, who's going to be performing at Hilarities uh, Wednesday the 15th through Sunday the 19th. Yeah. And, so make uh, sure you check that out. Tickets available at Dan Soder. Dot com. And all seven shows will be one part in a giant story arc. That's what I'm doing with my summer residency. <laughs> so if you come to the first show, I can catch you up to show four about where the story is headed. Dan does serial comedy now. I do. I really do. If there's, I call it a season. you got to have a season. <laughs> but you got to binge watch my comedy. you got to come watch seven shows in a row. Uh, we're gonna hey, did, you guys, did, did you guys hear at all that uh, Jason Mraz actually shit into Prince's autopsy surgery? Are you serious? I did. Dude, that's yeah. so, that's that's going full climbed up on the climbed up on the table and just took a hot dump in. They sewed him right up. Yeah, I heard uh, full tilt Mraz. <laughs> uh, it's the bonfire. We'll be right back. I'm Kevin Hart, and this is the bonfire with Big J Ogerson and Dan Soder. Hey Jay, you should tell the people the story about how your dick got stuck in the gas tank. If we were ever to do a duet, this is what we'd have to do. No. How very far apart we are. I'll be, I'll be Linda Help me think we might be seeing the same bright star. In honor of our long distance bonfire episode today, our bi coastal, if you will, that was, uh. This makes me think of. Bifle Goes West. No, it's an American, American Tale. That's what it is. American Tale. Somewhere out there. Can see us. <laughs> Love will see us through. I like when uh, when when James Ingram starts going for it at the end. Well, I was gonna say you just sounded like Enrique Igle Enrique Iglesias when they do the fucking real audio. <sighs> Can we play that again right now? Can we play the real Enrique Iglesias audio? There's nothing in the world I want to hear more than that right now. Long distance relationship music all show long. Thanks to Stephanie Falcone. Coming through with a great idea for music. Stephanie Falcone with a great idea. Uh oh. No, that's me uh -oh. soloing. Just imagine me soloing shirtless on top of the Sirius building. <laughs> the wind blowing? Yeah. As Jacob holds my amp. <laughs> and I'm just wailing. I got an open shirt that's just billowing in the wind. Merc face is standing next to you dressed like a uh, like a like one of those like Muslim, the Fruit of Islam guys. Yeah, but he's got a sword. 
<laughs> How we care? What is this? We are. This makes me want to watch it. Sing. We might be wishing upon the same bright star. It makes me wish. Uh, it makes me want to watch American Tale. No, it doesn't. You're right. Wait, here's the part. Here's where it gets big, dude. This is where Ingram starts wailing. Somewhere out there. <laughs> right here. Oh, that's touching. We got some, uh, we got the Enrique. He just sounds like a drunk neighbor. All right, Carlos, it's three in the morning. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! I'll call the cops! I'll call Get off my God. bed! Dude, Get I'll off my bed! Goddamn cops, Carlos! Get off my goddamn bed! <laughs> Drunk neighbor singing. <laughs> All I need. It's a, Is the rhythm device. It's almost like drunk Dude, karaoke. It's fucking so great. <laughs> Enrique, please go to bed. I know. We stopped doing coke three hours ago. I know. She's not going to call Stop. you at five in the morning. She's not going to call you. That's not a real number. Oh, dude, he's, yeah, he's been in there just fucking screaming. <laughs> I told you, I told you, man, he's in, he's in a rough. Uh, God, shut up, Enrique! I told you, he's in a rough place. He shouldn't have gone on this vacation. <laughs> he's in a corner wearing boxers, singing to a hair dryer. Yeah, you're like, stop it, dude. We gotta go to bed. We gotta go deep sea fishing in the morning. I have no, now you don't. Now you don't understand. She's going to call. My heart, I, I need some. Oh, my soul. All I need. All I need. <laughs> all I need. All I need. Oh, dude, I, it's seriously starting to upset me. Turn it off, or, or fucking server's about to go full blown morass in that studio. <laughs> I'm about to pop all your heads off your heads. To go full fucking morass. Dude, speaking of somebody going morass, you should bring this up in the studio there. Um, I watched a video. I believe it was world star hip hop um a girl it's uh, i get that it's uh, it's the annoying kind of flirting a girl does so i get that but the dude it's i think they're on a cruise ship first of all which is pretty funny if i recognize these cruise ships as i do now <laughs> You're like, um, it's, it's, a guy and a girl holding a drink and the girl looks like she's being kind of playfully flirty and the guy goes in sort of for her drink and she slaps his drink cup like, up in the air and he kind of, and she's like, kind of runs like playfully, and he, he chases after her. And then when they get around the corner, he's just kicking her in the face while she's on the ground. Jesus! I mean, full tilt moraz, dude. Yeah, that is full moraz. That's that's you know what that going moraz on the ocean. You know what they call that, don't you? What's that? Jimmy Buffett. I don't know. I was, trying to, I was like, who said soft, soft? Oh, that we could. You know what I should have said? I should have said that's going full Jack Johnson because he did because he does beach rock. Let's go and total wham on a bitch. Yeah, I gotta find Lou. We got the, we got our bloodhound on it. We got Lou the bloodhound. You know the, oh uh, yeah, you'll find this. Do you know the title, Jay? It just says "girl flirting." It's like what's like the new one of the newer videos. You're one of the newer videos. I am. Uh, <laughs> you're you're doing at midnight this week, right? I am. Do you know who, by the way? I just saw in this who's out here in the lobby. Oh. I'm looking through the door. Uh, Ricky Bones, our friend Ricky Bones, hey, is out here I, I thought in you were, L.A. I thought you were going to say it was the guy, uh, Jose, who always forgets that he's met me. Jose Mangan? He yeah. just never remember you. He never. Eight times never remembered me. Every time. Hey, what's up? I'm Jose. Oh, we're going to do that again. Cool. Hey, bro, it's me, Jose. Yeah, he, and he loves you, so he's like, Big J, the greatest comedian in the world, and who's your friend that I've never met before? Who's uh, this guy? Is he your handler? Oh, cool. He looks like your driver. Are you his driver? Do you know how to speak words? I'm like, hey, Jose. I, that's a, <laughs> yeah. Do you speak? Hey. What's up? What's this guy's deal? He just looks tall and weird. Oh, is he like um, your tall, weird, silent bouncer? Oh, by the I way, told you. <laughs> I said it's still the best. He goes, all right, these next guys here from Connecticut, they're really cool dudes. Uh, actually, one of them came to my daughter's bar mitzvah. That was pretty sweet. Are you guys ready to have your dicks ripped off by hate breed? 
dude, dude, I went and saw at Bonnaroo. We went and saw Lamb of God. So good, so good. But, <laughs> but I was uh, the mushrooms started kicking in, and I was just like, mm-hmm. "Why is this guy so mad?" All the time. By like the fourth oh, yeah. song, he's like, motherfuckers, get it. Lop, and I was like, hey, dude, hey, hey, it's Dan. Oh, I'm on some psilocybin. Yeah. Why don't you come here? Man? <laughs> what, are talking yeah, man, about? You, what do you feel? What's your you energy? Guys, you guys do any Barry Gibb covers or anything? Hey, I want I just, something I'm kind of mellow. I, I know this is going to sound weird. Do you do Margaritaville? Could you do Margaritaville? <laughs> son of a son of a sailor? I just in some, I'm in some mood for some Buffett. I'll take some Huey. If you got it. I'll take a little hue. Do we have a, do you have Walk With Me in Hell by Lamb of God? Give the people a taste of what that music's about. That's fucking. I'll tell you this, man. They fuck. Hard. It's, they're, they're, like, they're like harder Pantera. That's what I was saying. It was, you know what it was? It was in the same place we saw Pantera. Such a. Yeah. Yeah, such they mellow, this. Such mellow dudes. The lead singer, Randy, who's all, there's an awesome documentary. Uh, I forget what it's called, man. Shit, but it's a great documentary. He got uh, arrested. Yeah, for murder, right? In, in Czech, in Czech Republic, for uh, pushing a guy off the stage. Apparently, he, the guy like came on stage. He shoved him off the stage. The guy hit his head on a on like a what do you call it, like a barrier or whatever, and uh, died. And when he came back to play two years later to play a show there, they fucking arrested, kept him in jail for like three months. Gee, crazy. Well, really crazy. That's where that anger comes from. Because he Check nailed it. But, he said, I don't, but when we were on tour together, man, this was a guy who was like, hey, when we get to Portland, man, I got to take you to this. They have a huge, awesome bookstore. It's like a full city block length bookstore. And you're like, what? Yeah, that's hilarious. That's that's the exact, that's where we got the going Raz on, motherfuckers. Oh, you yeah. a guy like that, and he's just like, hey, man, nice to meet you. Do you know why he uh, liked me? Because at the kickoff show for Mayhem Fest that we were on together, um, his guitar player was hammered and I was like busting his balls a little bit talking to him and he went over to unplug my microphone and then somebody plugged it back in and I just shit on the guy till he left and he just loved he goes he goes he goes oh man he goes any friend any guy who takes a shit on my guitars for that long is a friend of mine because oh, I guess they wow. always fight oh wait really yeah. And he just became cool. Dude, he's so unassuming I actually didn't know that he was the lead singer of Lamb of God I thought he like worked for them or something and he's like, yeah, we're getting ready to go on now. I go, cool. And he just ran out on fucking stage and started doing it. Uh, yeah, turn, turn it up, Lou. Yeah, I'm about to go Mraz in this bitch. I feel like going Mraz. <laughs> you know what's so funny about that? Uh, this is what Mraz listens to in his day. <laughs> that's what he listens to before he goes on stage or when he gets off stage to pump himself back up. <laughs> Hey, Jason? Yeah, just getting my going out music ready. Oh, shit. He's just drinking <laughs> fucking, he's just drinking moonshine and doing lines of meth. Ah, 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 about to go give this morass. Hurricane morass is about to hit. He hires a midget to just beat the shit out of him in his dressing room before he goes on stage. Uh, I want someone smaller and weaker than me. Uh, I gotta get the evil out. Uh, got a bloodlet. I uh. <laughs> got a bloodlet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloodletting. <laughs> Jason Rice's backstage is just twisted. Just a fucking. He takes off his shirt and he's just all tatted up with satanic tattoos. It's like it's like brands he put on himself. Ah, oh, God. Sometimes I'll just be in a hotel and I'll warm up the coffee pot and I'll just put a fork on it and heat it up and then I'll twist it into a sign and burn it into my skin. <laughs> and he puts it on, he just makes, he just goes... <sighs> or, or he just starts making kissy faces. <laughs> like, as his flesh is getting seared, he's like... Mm. I love it. I love it. It's the only way I could feel. That's how I wrote. Oh fuck! I wish I knew the name of the song. And then he goes what on was stage. The song he goes. We were listening to? And then he goes on stage. He goes. Hick a buck a book a buck a beak a buck a book a boop a doop a deep a beep a pop a boop a. There's just blood dripping from his under t-shirt. Underneath his shirt, there's just pure evil. You see blood. Beep a bop a boop a dop a beep a bop a bing bang boop a doop a deep a tap a deep. Shab shab a doop a dab a doop bop a peep up. His his roadies are just terrified of him. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> what's this called, dude? What's the name? He's, of the, this he's song? burning. He's burning himself in the back. It's called. What? I'm yours, right? I'm yours. Yeah. I actually he's, wrote this uh, and I dedicated it to Satan. Imagine if he was singing this to the devil. It's funnier. Just listen to the lyrics. <laughs> 
He's in the back. He's in the back. He's got his hand over a flame. He's like, someone tune my ukulele. Yeah. I'm opening with I'm yours tonight. <laughs> like, Jason, no. He's like, I want the Dark Lord to walk the earth. <laughs> so I'm going to open with I'm yours. I want to conjure the dead spirit of Adolf Hitler with my <laughs> I'm yours. Yeah, if, if, you play it music, if, if you play it backwards, it's just terribly yeah, awful yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 Adolf Hitler was right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitler was right. Yep, yep, yep. Satan will cleanse the world of all the wrongdoers. Yeah, but, yeah, but only way is murder. Only way is murder. Only way is let it go. Trying in a <laughs> That's a wait. Let's see if we can line it up like Pink Floyd and Wizard of Oz. Do it again. Yeah, if you listen to the third strum of the ukulele to the uh, first sentence of Hitler's speech, a lot of people know this, but those are the devil's chords he's playing on the ukulele. Yeah, that, that's a heavy A into a D. That's the devil's run. It makes sense. It makes sense to me. It's going to be four cold full grass. Hey, I got that uh, video for you, Jay. Oh, you found the, you oh, found the video? Let dude, me, let me put it on. Let me put, by the way, I want to say that I'm, we're in the comedy office. And I'm sitting on my seat. Your seat's empty like a widow that puts dinner out for her dead husband. <laughs> Is there knuckle gloves just sitting in my chair? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny, man. We had that whole episode, uh, was that last week when we talked about that? Like the accidentally hitting girls or the violence like towards women or something? Yeah. I mean, when you see it, you're like, you're like, what the fuck could this girl... like? Not even like attempt like spitting on her maybe first or something like that. It's like not. I mean, this is fucking like in. This guy loses. I mean, this guy goes full morass. All right, so he has it. Here it is. All right, all giggles. Uh, I mean, that's so playful. Whoa! Whoa! What the fuck? And what he gives her one more stomp at the end. What the fuck was that? What the fuck? Dude, he that was straight up WWF. Like old school WWF where a, here, where a baby face would get, get jumped in the back after a match. But that's real. Yeah. And that's a man on a woman. What a fucking animal. And the girls clearly kind of like, like you know, like, ha, ah, chase me. Like, play, you know. That's all playful. Whoa! Whoa! Joshua, stop! Oh, wow. Hey, by the way, you hear a loud, those, those, well, those, it sounds like slapping, those are kicks. Well, he's barefoot. Yeah, the last one, he stomps on her head. Yeah, what the, did they find this guy? Can you look up the criminal, if they fucking arrested this dude? Here's all I know, if that was a cruise ship, I will tell you this, that was definitely the fourth day. That's the day you start losing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's his excuse in court and he gets off. The guy it was the fourth day, man. There was nothing that I wanted to do anymore. The shuffleboard courts were all taken. This I'll bitch comes over, knocks a thing. You it's, expect me not to go morass on this broad? And by the way, it's the last of the ruby red vodka, and I'm enjoying myself a nice <laughs> cocktail. It's raining outside. I can't go outside. She hits my drink. I went full morass. I just uh, I couldn't see anything. I chased her down. All I kept hearing was "I'm yours" in, in my head, can, and uh, can we now, that's kicking music. He was can we now mix up? Can we mix up I'm Yours now with that video? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Josh, stop! Oh, fuck! It's that... I mean, this guy needs to get the shit kicked out of him. We need to hunt this man down. I'll that, spend the next hour mixing Mraz with, like, the funniest thing. Can we do, like, like super, like, hardcore, aggressive oh, uh, shit-talking porno? Can we do aggressive shit-talking porno with Mraz music playing in the background? Or I was also going to say some of those uh, banned from TV videos, like where the girl gets hit by the train. Oh, she just got full Mraz. I was like, calling it the most... E yeah, Mraz was like... Yeah, that was Mraz. On hey, Merc Face goes, Mraz was driving the train. Is, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any... Uh, I mean, I want a dude Mraz fan to call in and say he does not get into Mraz because of the pussy. 
Oh, I you're saying if there's a male viewer, a male listener who actually likes Jason Mraz to call. I mean, digs this shit for like real. 844 266 If you're a man that actually enjoys. By the way, couldn't be, like an, some, couldn't be like a nicer some guy. I like music. In real I, life. I like some, I'm sure. And for I the like sake some, of this bit, he's an asshole. I like some real giggly, you know, some real girly music. But what's the girliest think, news? Oh, we never did this. All kinds, like all kinds of, of like, like we got to do know. next Monday. Let's promise the listeners that we'll do um, for music. We'll do our guilty pleasures. It was, oh, rec- yeah, it was recommended sure. and we never did it. I mean, but listen, I'll listen to the fucking uh, the Bee Gees and all kinds of silly music, even some uh, some love song stuff. Not my problem at all. But I mean, like overall, if you go, I was in I'm going to go buy I'm going to go buy the Ed Sheeran album. Oh, OK, it's got to be for pussy. Yeah, uh, I got into I got into Snow Patrol, but it was for pussy. Yeah, like to me, there's a guy, like my fuck music as a guy is like... Uh, Pantera? Like sl- no, 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 no. I mean, those are good ones, too. Oh, dude. But I mean, like, no, but but, but like, you know, like Deftones, White Pony album. Oh, uh, that's cool. Right. So, like, like Tool songs are good, like fuck. They just, they, they're, I, in, they're uh, good. They're, they're intense. They're deliberate. They're sort of slow at times. Like, I fucked a D- They're heavy. They're, they're good. D'Angelo and Outkast. So apparently I'm a Southern black man. Oh, when I was younger, man. I used to try to do it to uh, like boys to men tapes and stuff. Oh, now, I, I got your st- I got your mega mix right in front of me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I told this. I told the story of. Uh, I think I told the story on the show before. Of the first time Carla came back to my house and my little brother set up the room for us. Yeah. And he had the PlayStation playing. Uh, it was like Lionel Richie music and shit. It was like, just like a love. It was like, it was like a love song CD and like Good PlayStation One used to. PlayStation 1 used to put the, uh, if you played a CD in it on the screen, it would do like kaleidoscopy. Yeah, like, why don't pictures. they do that anymore? They need to do that. That was a lot of fun. Because they figure adults don't want to fuck to your PlayStation anymore? Uh, well, they're wrong. <laughs> so some of us have a PlayStation 4 and would love to fuck to it. <laughs> just a slow, just D'Angelo while there's like a, while there's. Yeah, a ball remember bouncing, the, remember the, remember an the, orange ball the, bouncing from corner to corner. Remember the program logo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Pen yeah. up. Yeah, that's all I was doing. Hey, let me put on some D'Angelo and get some uh, computer screensavers going. <laughs> Ooh, I want some young pressure. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Imagine I'm a shirtless. And then she's like, can, we put, on Mar- can we put on Mraz and can you choke me and punch me in the face as you fuck me? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I knew it. Uh, I, was like, I really like to get hit. I know it's weird. But I just like to get hit. Just if you really bruise up my shoulders, that'd be great. We're just kissing. And if the- you can kick on, if you can kick on some moraz during that, bonus. Hey, would you mind heating up your belt buckle and uh, really whipping me with it to some Jason Moraz? I'm yours, <laughs> Jake in Texas. Come on now. Come on with it, Jake in Texas. Line two, Jake. Is this Jake? This is John from Pittsburgh. John from you know Pittsburgh? What? You know what, John? I leave the studio and everything falls the fuck apart over yeah, there. Yeah, well, Andy's taking it like he's a busy CEO. Well, we, uh, we have... Uh, uh, what, what shame? We just put the other guy, we just threw him off. He had a good story, too. Uh, Jake in Texas, it says your first dance at your wedding was to Jason Mraz. But I'm guessing that had to be more of your chick's pick. And, you, and it's one you'll kind of go with because... On a sentimental level, it's nice, but you don't like listen to the CD by yourself, do you? Am, am I on? Yeah. Crackle, crackle. Crackle, 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 Jake. Hey, um, yeah, no, I'm like a redneck from Texas, like gun-toting motherfucker, and she wanted uh, I Won't Give Up by Jason Mraz as okay. our first song. Okay. It wasn't even on so. yours? <laughs> and you know that song, I Won't Give Up, was actually... Uh, that was actually written because he he wrote that saying I won't give up until all mentally retarded people are killed. He's going full. <laughs> people don't realize like- that. that's actually what this song's about. Uh, I don't think I won't give up until I can legally set a Native American on fire. Yeah, he's real bad. Be- yeah, as he calls them savages. <laughs> I like your Jason Mraz where the retarded kid, you take the baseball from him, but I was thinking that someone hammers a line drive and you have a mid on 
You yeah. choose not to catch the ball and you let it beam the kid in the face. That is that's a morass. That's going morass. That's a morass. Yeah, that's sure. going pretty morass. Oh, that's hardcore morass. Just fucking nailing line drives at retarded kids. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm also thinking you have a you have a nice shot on a deer, he's bride broadside. You wait till he turns so all you can see is his butthole. And you take the old Texas heart shot. Ah, shoot him in the butthole. That's a mirage. Right in the butthole out the chest. That's a good point. Hey, did you guys ever hear that Jason Mraz used to run a camp for handicapped kids and he would make them all put their baseball mitts on their heads while he just nailed line drives in their chest? Dude, this is the craziest thing ever. I heard a story about Jason Mraz where he went to uh, Sudan, took former children's soldiers, brought them over to the United States, and then hunted them as human game. <laughs> he made him fight each other to the death while he watched on him played his ukulele. Yeah. He let him oh, watch that, the movie. It's funny, it's funny that ukulele just like makes like certain kids cry because they remember. That's, that brings them back. That's their post-traumatic stress. Like, I can't even hear a ukulele anymore. I, there's an African warlord. The meanest person I have ever met in my life is Jason Raz. I tell you, we have a saying in my village that his mother is a leopard and his father is a lightning bolt from the devil. <laughs> and inside this woman's stomach, pure hatred grew. His name is Jason Raz. Last summer, Eddie Vedder. And Jason Mraz came on a ukulele tour and tried to fuck the AIDS out of all of our babies. They say that we have it too good here in Africa. Jason Mraz says we live too high on the hog. He says that he <laughs> needs to take us down a notch. He said we are not cradle of civilization. He says we are the taint of civilization. We are not worthy of living in our trash-made homes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jason Mraz just hates Africa. Uh, we should start that rumor. Man, we have <laughs> such a good rumor mill. Who else should we take down? No, Jason Mraz. And here's the thing. The nicest guy. That's yeah, what? to your face. You're right. But then I heard, I've just heard stories. I've just heard stories from some of the roadies. <laughs> yeah, he goes, dude, the last girl he fucked backstage, he bit her cheek off because she wouldn't take it in the ass. <laughs> First. That's how he starts. <laughs> she wouldn't take it the ass first. He goes, let me just do the butt. I just, I just want the ass. And she's like, can we just like, make ah! out for a few minutes? Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah! Because now you're really fucked. Sap <laughs> <coughs> tap tap. He just starts. Sap <laughs> tap tap tap. He's like, yeah. He goes. He just lays back. He lays back in a in a tank top on a couch and he goes, you know where the door's at. <laughs> this is all just a ploy for us to get Jason Mraz on the show to make up more Jason Mraz stories. Oh my God! I bet he would love that. I bet he'd be down. I'd love to, now, now, now I'd love to interview him. Yeah, just about how satanic and evil he is. Yeah, just have him come on and just do a full interview about making up what a terrible person he is. Uh, if you're, if anyone knows Jason Mraz, first off, tell him I said hello again. <laughs> what's the name? What's, tell him Soder says hi again. <laughs> uh, he remembered me. I told him I was a tall guy with a thing. And I was, tall guy, I was and... super stoned in the artist tent, and I was drinking a mug root beer, which, by the way, I haven't had in about six years. It's so he was wearing a good. He was, he was wearing a Big Show t-shirt, and uh... <laughs> he, had a, he had the Rock. Would you, do you smell what the Rock is cooking t-shirt? And the next day, he had an Iggy Pop t-shirt on. The guy really dresses uh, like he's a ninth grader. And then um, he got a little sweaty and put on an Austin three sixteen. Um, what's the what's the like gayest music you've oh, that I hooked love? up to? Oh, that no, I you hooked up to? You hooked up to? Oh, I really have to think, but I want to say like uh, oh. I got my dick sucked to an NSYNC CD. <laughs> That's probably the gayest thing. That's pretty gay. I wish you'd be my girlfriend. I was like... <laughs> and I was like... Oh. And it was like... It, I remember because it was like... Uh, I was about to come and then Dirty Pop came on and it bit me some time. Oh. It was like, Dirty Pop! Dirty Pop! And I was like, okay. This is kind of weird. <laughs> I, even, I even said something. I was like, this, this, is this in sync? Mm -hmm. Dirty pop. <laughs> Eat that, pop, that, pop. Dirty pop. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> that was the first, first noise. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, oh, work the knob. Dirty pop. <laughs> but what's, what were we talking about the other day? The, the, first, the first noise you make when a girl touches it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I made fun of another comic this weekend saying oh, that he looked yeah, like so I said he looked like he does POV porn and he didn't find it funny. <laughs>
It was one of those things where you're like, oh, not everyone likes to bust balls the way we do. Okay. Oh, man. Christine's right. My fuck song mix is pretty hilarious. Dude, it is really funny. It's Marilyn Manson. It, you know what? If you told me it was a playlist for a hot topic, I would believe it also. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, completely unoffensive. And also, you could fuck to it. Got it. No, but it's, there's some good ones. 46 and 2 is great. Good rhythm. You have. Uh, fa- by the way, by the way, White found County. out. Se- Def- found out several bangs in that Christine not a fan of I Put a Spell on You by Marilyn Manson. Oh, well, it is. <laughs> That's, I, I always thought she lost a little steam around song yeah. five. I put a spell on you. The original one's creepy as shit. That's when the, uh, that's when the, uh, that's when the beach got a little toothy, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Then she's it, like, then it kicked back in with some, with, and then it kicked back right in with some fucking. Deftones. Yeah, that's what it is. She's like, okay, I forgive you. I, I used to hook up with a girl who was like in the classical music, so I've I've uh, I banged the chick to Brahms Third. <laughs> that's oh, pretty... nice. Mm, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Well, okay. Wait, wait. What was your guess? One, one. Th- Me? Yeah. What was your? What's the? What's the worst song? What's the girliest song that you've hooked up to? Um. Probably, uh, like probably when I was younger, like like uh, eating a girl's puss to let's go away to the waters one try. Oh, but that's good. That's a good one. No, but it's not. But it's not me. Like banging the like black soul music is not really what it strikes you. That I'd be doing. I just imagine you lifting her by her lower back. Yeah, girl. I mean, mouthing the words when the high pitched guy goes, "Let's go away to the water try." <laughs> And I, just, I close my eyes. It gets painful for me to, like, to mouth those words. Yeah, I, I imagine you started by her writing you, but you're in an all-white silk pajama pants oh. with pajama uh, bottoms. Well, here's the calls we've been waiting for. Uh, let's do Ryan in Pittsburgh first. <laughs> I like it's always these seedy situations with great music. Ryan, what's up, buddy? What, what's up? Hey, this is Joe from Pittsburgh. Hey, Joe. Joe. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up, buddy? So... All right, so here's what crackle crackle. By the way, crackle crackle. Um, all right, so my go-to was um, Sting's "Dream of the Blue Turtle." Oh, nice! You're getting some tantric. <laughs> you're getting some tantric sex in. If it wasn't that, it would be Roxy Music Avalon. Okay. But, oh, yeah. uh, all right, so we listen. I met this chick named Dusty yeah. at uh, at a Kennedy party, and. Uh, so she was like, one of her friends were asking if I wanted to hook up with her. And the signal was she slipped her bra off from her shirt sleeve and put it in my pocket and said, now you have to go home with Dusty for her to get her bra back. So I talked to my buddy and I said, let's hook up with these chicks. They were freshmen. We were, we were seniors. I said, let's go back to my apartment. And, uh, we popped on Sting, Dream of the Blue Turtles. You know, you light some candles, get these two freshmen in the room. Oh, my God, this sounds rapey. So, um, <laughs> and, and <laughs> we popped on this thing, and I was like, uh, my buddy was getting a, a blowjob from this other girl, and I had Dusty on the bed, and I was banging her, and I'm, I'm pulling her legs over my shoulders, banging her. I was like, baby, I'm going to come on your face, and I'm going to eat it off. Do you think that's hot? And she's like, oh, my God, that would be so hot. That would be so hot. And I was like, I'm going to come. I'm going to come. Came on her face, and then I bent over and gave her a towel. And I said, here, you should use this to clean it up. And she was like, I thought you were going to eat it off me. I was like, I don't feel too up to it anymore. Mm. <laughs> that is rapey. I'll tell you what that is. That's that's pretty morass of you. <laughs> <laughs> what was... Yeah, well, <laughs> Ramsey is like the kind of guy that you get a chick goes on his tour bus and she's like, you know, she sees him decked out in his Hurley gear and then he's like, come on in my back room, the bed on the tour bus, and he starts fucking her with fish and shit. Oh, yeah, going full Zeppelin. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's full Zeppelin, man. Yeah, you did a Pittsburgh Mraz. That's what I'm calling what you did to that girl. Mraz. Yeah. Maybe from- Fuck it. All right. Um, yeah, thanks for calling in, dude. I don't know the call. We got lost the call, uh, but that was. Uh, there's nothing. I'm trying to think of the worst music I've hooked up to. I think that in sync thing is the worst. Um, well, Bobby in Oklahoma says he hooked up to "Relax" by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, which that, you might as well just you might as well just fucking tell her you're getting her you're giving her AIDS if you're gonna do that. <laughs> I always feel like that's just drug sex music. 
That's like a girl that realizes it halfway is. through she doesn't want to be there because she's just. That's too how I high. feel. That's how I feel about Roxy Music Group too. It's like yeah. Roxy Music Group yeah. is very like uh, you want to hear you you're there in studio with Christine. You want to see her uh, want to see her blood run cold. Put on a it just makes her want to go out and like and stab you to get to some coke. Put on Roxy Music Group. Love is the drug. It I makes her so uncomfortable. No, why would you make her fiend in the studio when she when you're not even here? You can't. I wait. just want you to see watch, watch how itchy she gets. I don't want to give her the coke itches, but play it. Sorry, Lou's walking over to the board. <laughs> and he's, there it is. This is... <laughs> oh, God, she's sweating, Jay. She's already... The sweat's cracked the brow. It just gets her... It's, it's, yeah. it, it, but I, I'm not a Coke guy, oh, but she no. said she did... Co- yeah. She's got a swab on her arm, Jay. I think she's booting. <laughs> oh, this is total Coke music. This is... Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> you ever... You ever party before? Wait to hear the, the when the words kick. It's so like it's such coke music. I'm telling you, after my weekend of drugs, I think I'm kind of down with this. <laughs> now that I'm all up on the MDMA, all of what all the cool kids are doing, you know, like it's 1998. <laughs> 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 I just imagine Mraz is just walking around his apartment in an underwear holding a 30, 357 revolver. <laughs> just stopped by his kitchen table just to do it like uh, Alfred Molina and Boogie Nights. Hey, thanks for coming over, Jason Mraz. <laughs> Doing some lines off your pussy lips. Oh. oh. Wait, hold oh, on. Shit. Andy's got one. Andy, what's up? Merc face. Do you guys remember the Barbie song? No. Oh. I'm a Barbie girl. I'm a Barbie yeah, girl. Like, in a bar- like yeah. the second time I ever had sex, the girl was obsessed with that song. So you had to fuck to Aqua's <laughs> yeah. Barbie? Uh-huh. How you long? fucked a girl that was into that song? Did you also did you uh, did you try anal by listening to Eiffel's "I'm Blue"? Ba da be ba da ba da ba ba be ba da ba 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 be ba da ba. No, I'm not Mraz. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, Come on. Mar- oh, Mraz doesn't do that. Mraz actually uh, <laughs> he does. Mraz fucks to videos of stillborns. Well, let's not take our word for it because there's some breaking news here from Matt. From Matt from Missouri's got some breaking Mraz news. Oh my God, Matt, Mizzou, what's your what? Did, yep. What did you hear? Well, uh, he's not allowed to perform in St. Louis anymore. Last time he was here, he uh, set the animal cells on fire. <gasps> oh, oh my God, God. that is God. true. I've heard. I heard. I think I read about that too. Yeah, I heard it's because he fucked. I heard, I heard it's because he fucked some of the dogs, and he thought they would talk. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That's a that's a fresh rumor out of St. Louis. I heard it was because he put dynamite all through the tower, through the uh, through the gate, and he was going to blow it. The arch. He's going to blow the whole thing. Yeah, he's going to blow the arch when people were at the top. Yeah, children, a whole school visiting. Uh, Sancho in Houston says he hooked up with uh, "Sex You Up" by Color Me Bad, but that doesn't strike. That's like for the time that was right. That made sense if it was, unless it was like you know last year. But then it's kind of novelty, also. Sancho, crackle, 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 crackle buddy. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I don't think that's I, that I, bad, I man. I think "Color Me Bad" is not that bad of a song to hook up to. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's the word. <laughs> It, you, it's a did you have to take off? Order. Did you have to take off pleated pants to do it? Oh, it was this chick, this Mexican chick I hooked up with had it on a loop. Oh, that's great! Oh my God, you had to hear it over and over and over again. Oh my! Well, for I mean, hours. I mean, that's a long time to fuck. Did she keep it on? Was she trying to torture you like you were in Gitmo? Why did she just keep I, it on for <laughs> hours? Dude, I was, was 19. Oh, that's perfect. I was like, 19. She's probably like, this I, I, song is my, this song is my sexy. Sit on. I'm going to play this shit for you. We're going to listen I'm to only fucking you. I'm only fucking you because you wear your car. You smell my good. Also, don't come in me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I like you because oh, you got tinted God. windows on your, t- on your Corolla. <laughs> uh, thanks for calling in, Sancho. 
Get a lowered BMW 328. Yeah. There you have it. Perfect. Lowered. Lowered. Fat wheels. Oh, and they're just getting banged out to some color to me bad. We got to take a break. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. Bonfire. Summertime's packed with things to do. With so much going on, it's easy to let sleep slide and take a back seat. That's why I love our sleep number beds. The only bed clinically proven to improve sleep quality. Even when I sleep a little less than I should, I'm getting quality sleep, so I wake up rested, ready for a day of fun. My sleep number setting is jumping. It's 55. Jay's is 70 because he's consistent. The sleep, oh. the sleep number bed lets me choose my ideal firmness and change it. Each side adjusts, making it perfect for the bed for couples. I know, right? How soothing is this read? With optional Sleep IQ technology, it tracks your sleep, so you know what to adjust for your best quality sleep, like your sleep number setting. According to Sleep Re- IQ Sleep Research, people who adjust their sleep number setting are 58% more likely to have improved sleep quality. Come in and discover the award-winning Sleep Number Bed with Sleep IQ technology, starting at only one thousand and ninety-nine dollars and ninety-eight cents. No oh, better sleep. Oh, 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 oh. What's up? I'm Jay? sorry. I just had a night terror. I've been, I'm very far from my sleep number bed. I'm, I'm out here in L.A. I, just, I had a night terror. I haven't had that because Sleep IQ technology told me how to not make that happen. Exactly. So in two days when you're back, you'll, be, you'll know better sleep. Because sleep number beds and Sleep IQ technology are only available at one of the 500 sleep number stores nationwide. Find one near you by going to sleepnumber.com. And of course, Jay, they got to tell them that the boys from the bonfire, Jay and Dan, sent you. Oh, oh. Dan? Dan? Back to sleep, buddy. I'm Kevin Hart, and this is The Bonfire with Big J. Ogerson and Dan Soder. It is The Bonfire. We's back. Big J. Ogerson, Dan Soder. Dan Soder performing at Hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio, the 15th through the 19th. Make sure you check it out. Tickets available at dansoder.com. Yeah, and if you don't have tickets to Skank Fest, what the fuck are you doing? They're on sale at creeklic.com. Festival is going to be Friday and, or this Saturday and Sunday. But get your all-access passes now, and then you can attend the big premiere party. Premiere party for what? For Big J. Okerson's one-hour special live at Webster Hall this Friday at midnight on Comedy Central. Set your motherfucking DVRs. And also, uh, listen to Jay on Unmasked with Ron Bennington this Friday, 2 p.m. on Raw Dog Comedy Channel 90. Walata. <laughs> From the sweet Stephanie Falcone, we're doing what I walk up. Like the goofy act. When I walk up, uh, well, you know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who walks along with ye. Yeah, I go. Oh, Christ. Dan, Dan, he's at it again. Nick in Indiana has some more morass. This guy's going around the, the country tearing up shit. Oh, no. Nick in Indiana, what's up, buddy? Crackle, 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 yeah, buddy. Crackle, what, crackle. What did you hear? What was what was Hurricane Mraz to up now? Mraz was the pit for Dave Sandusky. Oh, oh, you linked him to that. I, you know what Jeez. it was? I forgot that this actually was. I'm, I'm with you. Was also written about having sex with young boys who are innocent. Yeah, <laughs> he, Mraz used to tie him up with ukulele strings. The pounds, so Sandusky wouldn't be heard in the showers. He would play the ukulele yeah. outside of the showers, so no one would hear Sandusky having sex with hey, the boys. Is there a man on man rape happening in this room? Goes, oh, come on, there couldn't be, man. He looks like it's like a guitar, but it's tiny and from Hawaii. Hawaii. In the background, back just hearing. You just hear that. Help me, I'm just a boy. He can start singing louder. He can buck a book about a big hack. He can buck a book about a big hack. He can buck a book Help, I'm your hell. There's trouble in here. He can buck a book about a big hack. He's just trying to cover up the lyrics. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Uh, you, All right, man. You're the best, Nick in Indiana. Um, yeah, we just kind of want people to know more about this. That way, you know, we're uncovering the monster behind the ukulele. Well, if we don't... <laughs> <laughs> we got to find out who this... There's a monster behind that ukulele hat. <laughs> that sun hat. There was just... <laughs> sun hat. There's just one guy in 1998 that's like, I promise you, he is... 
pure evil. <laughs> he will be exposed. You'll see one day. <laughs> Shut up. Stephanie, Falcon, Stephanie Falcone called them Raz Holes, which is <laughs> Yeah, Mraz Holes. His fans. His fans. <laughs> It's like it's fucking it's a Hawaiian beach music. Hikabakaduka hikamukawaka hiki. Oh. Wait, hey Bob in Massachusetts. Robert Bobby in Mass. Bob. How's it going, guys? Hey, what's up, crackle crackle motherfucker? Uh, <laughs> crackle crackle, you cocksucker. Yeah, fucking mother's a crackle. You're a fucking crackle. You're cocksucking crackle, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, you got a story for us on the bonfire? Yeah, fucking calling in about Jason Mraz. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you've yeah, seen you've seen this abomination live. This pure uh, this pure uh, version of evil. You know, it's funny. I've been a fan of Jason Brad since like 2001. And uh, wait, what made I, you get on? What made you get on the on the Mraz train? Was it? Well, the guy's an international rapist. You gonna not follow that guy? <laughs> yeah, I heard. I heard actually. Uh, I read on a blog that Jordan Vandersloot learned everything he knew from Jason Mraz. <laughs> he goes, "It's simple, man. You lure him in with some ukulele. Next thing you know, you kill him on a beach." I'll tell you this: Hikabaka, Hikawaka, Hikawaka, Hookie. If you're down in Peru, smash their head in with a rock. It's a local custom. <laughs> <laughs> These girls know what they're getting into when they go home with a guy wearing a bowling shirt, unironically. Yeah. <laughs> a good looking guy in a sun hat. It's always a dangerous combination. What happened when you saw him? Dude, I, I never felt so old. I I was in uh, I was in my late thirties, now I'm in my middle forties, but I was in my late thirties and I found out he was doing a show at a at a college okay. on the weekend. Oh boy. That weekend. So I went to the ticket. I talked my wife into coming with me because she's not a Mraz fan. Dude, I, um, hold on real quick, Bob. I love the fact that your wife is not into Jason Mraz, but you are. She's like, you fucking queer. What, are you going to go see Jason Mraz? You <laughs> yeah, you, I, like your, I like your wife was like, see Jason Mraz? What am I, a faggot? Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, why don't, uh, next time we go to a bees game, why don't you tuck your fucking <laughs> cock between your legs? And I'll put a strap on on because apparently I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tony, uh, this queef blob over here hey. wants to go see fucking Jason Mraz. Ah, fucking didn't know same-sex marriage was legal when I got <laughs> married here because I married a chick. Uh, Is it cock in your mouth right at the stadium? <laughs> hey, let me know when you want me to put your butt plug in when we walk in. Uh, what did you, how did you convince her to go with you? I just she knew I was a big fan, so she's like, "Yeah, fine, I'll go." So I went to the ticket. <laughs> I went to the ticket office at the college, and I went in. She was in the car. They had one ticket left, and oh. it was on the floor. I love and it. You knew I was buying that. <laughs> oh, dude, that's so great that you bought. You let one. your wife off the. You let your wife off the hook. You went yourself. Oh, please, please, hook, yeah. please tell me your wife had to sit in the car and wait for you as you were serenaded by ukulele for ninety minutes. <laughs> You should have you should have made her pick up you and your new college girlfriend. Uh, that's right. Really hey, funny. this is De this is Denise. We're seeing each other now. She's a sophomore, but also into Jason Mraz. <laughs> she gets Mraz like I do. Who can buck hickey? Hey, can you? We're go going by, to a sh we're gonna go buy a we're grocery store and pick up a gallon of pig's blood to fuck in to some Mraz. We're, <laughs> we're driving to Florida next weekend to go see Sugar Ray. Oh, that's great. That's another evil one that I've heard about, Mark McGrath. But I, I heard he's no. I heard he's no. He's he's Goebbels to. Uh, uh, to Mraz is Hitler. <laughs> that's, the, that's the secret new Third Reich. Is He's the Mussolini. Mar yeah, is McGrath, uh, McGrath, Mraz, and fuck, who's another one? Who could be on our who can be on our new Third Reich of uh, pop, oh, soft pop people? Easy. Jack jo Jack Johnson was a good one you said before. Jack Johnson just doesn't feel evil enough. Smash Mouth. It doesn't. Oh, the lead singer of Smash Mouth Club. No, 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 no. Their music's too like. I mean, Chris it's got to be real. I Chris Martin, I actually like Coldplay. Chris Martin, we actually had a call that we lost before. That the guy said his uh, college girlfriend would come super hard when they would fuck the clock. But so would I. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't come hard? To you that? know what? If you had to say, I went to a Cold, I went to a uh, Coldplay concert before. That's probably one that's like a, uh, probably people would say that in my wheelhouse. But I thought they were fucking great. Yeah, guess who got you those tickets? Oh, you did. Uh, yeah. Oh. I had to ask another man to get me Coldplay tickets that's so I can go to see so I can go to see Coldplay with another man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, Bob's still on the phone. What did your wife think of Mraz after you guys went? 
She didn't go. Well, she didn't oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just bringing that up again, hoping she's listening, hating you. He, he yeah, only had one ticket, and he told her to stay home. I'm going to go see Mraz by myself, surrounded by college girls. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. I and went, your wife anyway, trusts you. She I goes... I was twice as old as everybody in there and probably like one of the only dudes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious that your uh, your wife wasn't even worried about you. What are you going to do? Run off one of those college kids, you half a fag? Yeah, you're <laughs> fucking older than dirt, Bob. No one's going to fuck you. And what also, hate to say this before you walk in the door, but Jason Mraz <laughs> blows. <laughs> hey, afterwards, maybe go back to a dorm room and practice making out on pillars with uh, one of those fucking broads. Hey, fuck, why don't I buy you? I'll go to the grocery store and pick you up a Tiger Beat magazine, you little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I got <laughs> I got you some razors to shave your legs, you fucking homo. Yeah, I'll show you how to put in a tampon when we get home. <laughs> uh, Bob, thanks for calling in, and uh, thank you for being so brave to admit that you like Jason Mraz. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. I'm going to say you're fueled by the evil. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Well, you know what? Just when you think he slows down, it never ends, does it? Uh, Brian in Florida's got some more Mraz updates for us. What's going on? Brian. Crackle, crackle. What's crackle, up, dude? Crackle, crackle, dude. What's good? I actually have a uh, story about Jason Mraz. He, uh, he actually worked at a local restaurant in, uh, in the town I'm from, and um, he was a cook in the, in the kitchen. He used to, uh, on his lunch break, he would go to the abortion clinic and pull fetuses out of the dumpster. <sighs> And then he would come back to the kitchen, and he would make a uh, a baby stew, put baby carrots and everything in it, and then he um uh, he would call it the Mraz goulash and sell it to customers. Oh, that is so oh. Mraz. That's so Mraz of him. Thanks for exposing the light. It's, <laughs> there's the babies singing. There they are now. This is the souls of those babies. Yeah, that's what he did. He took their souls. And he has children sing it. Those souls, they say those souls still live in his ukulele. Yeah, they say if you if you sleep with the ukulele out at night, you'll hear the, all of their screams of when he took all their lives. Help us. Help us. Sing, my army of dead children. <laughs> sing. Sing my song of evil. Sing it. Sing my song. I take their strength. I drink from your cup. I drink it up. Liberté, liberté, Utana Sala Hawa Morais. I can't wait for a Jason Moraes storytellers episode. Oh, well, oh, this that's is so uh, great. I funny how this uh, one was written. <laughs> this one was written when I used to go make baby goulash from the fetuses of the abortion clinic. Uh, I worked at a diner, small small diner down in Florida, but I knew I wanted to do music and. Uh, the souls of those babies really does fuel my ukulele, I gotta tell you. This is called I'm Yours. Dinkabaka, sukabaka, hickabaka, wiki. Uh, I just, this, I wrote this story as just a young, young songwriter, just kind of coming up, not <laughs> really knowing where I was going. And one time I just pulled over and I saw this homeless man and he needed so much help. And well, this is off the album We Sing, We Dance. Oh, damn it. I couldn't find the full name. <laughs> We steal things, and uh, I stole that man's life that night. So I wrote this song. <laughs> I wrote this song. <laughs> his soul still lives inside him. Oh shit! He's made his way to Chicago. Nick in Chicago. What's going on? What is this God. prick done now? <laughs> Damn it. So, my best friend's Jewish, and the word I'm on sorry. the street was Moran. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yes. What, yeah. No. What was the rumor on the street? So the, the rule around the street is uh, he's actually been uh, posing. Um, uh, he's been going to bar mitzvahs, and he, he's posing as a rabbi. But the thing is, he's performing the circumcisions with his teeth. Oh, classic Mraz. Oh, classic Mraz. Oh, thanks for also, calling I don't, in. I, Make sure if you're you. doing any uh, bar mitzvahs coming up, make sure you check the rabbi. It always could be Jason Mraz. Also, let's get make sure Nick check his Jew facts because you don't get circumcised at a bar mitzvah. That's no, a bris. You're already a man. So unless he's saying that that he's so evil, give me some Jason Mraz in the background here. Unless we're saying that he's so evil that he's going to bar mitzvahs and biting the tips of the dicks off of thirteen year old boys. 
Yeah, that's uh, also Stephanie Falcone has a good point. Those aren't you know what? That's the first. That's the first one I'm going to say. I'm going to say that's a lie. That wasn't a real Mraz rumor. (laughs) Oh, this is uh, three real things, one fake thing. Um, what does Tiffy Falcone say? She said those aren't ukuleles. Mraz steals guitars from small children who just want to love music, and then he oh. just plays them. That's a good point. And then he laughs at them while they have to sit there tied up with barbed wire. Yeah, in fact, his uh, his 2001 EP from the cutting room floor was written all about lyrics of letters. All the lyrics are letters of missing children, uh, Their parent, the letters that the parents wrote that he kidnapped. He took those letters and then arranged them into songs. So it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> all those kids are dead, by the way. He killed them all. Every oh, and he's got one. The guitar, the ukulele strings are made from the hairs of, dead. of those dead children. I feel I just, I, oh. I heard that a lot. That's very Native American of them. For everyone knows the man in the sun hat will take the children from the village and turn them into guitar strings to play the songs of the great evil. Everyone knows. <laughs> A great evil. You shall play a guitar. Small like that of a pony, but powerful like that of a thundercloud. For in, unrelated, in unrelated news, Lamb of God just opened a soup kitchen. Oh, I heard that. I actually heard that uh, Pantera is giving away all their proceeds for Locks of Love. So <laughs> That's why he always had a shaved head. Yeah, it was for it. Locks of Love the whole time. Because you grow it out while they're making an album and then give it to a sick girl. The Dimebag Daryl Foundation, his posthumous charity foundation, yeah. where he helps way, sick kids. Marilyn Manson gives raspberries to orphans on their tummies <laughs> to make them feel loved. So, Just to let him know that someone out there cares enough to touch you. Also, a uh, true story, Mark McGrath slapped my mother in the mouth. So, <laughs> Unrelated. Always unrelated. Unrelated. Uh, and, uh, uh, we got to find out who's going to be their Mussolini. Or who's the yeah. Japanese leader. Who knows? History, right? I'm sure it's Eddie Vedder. I don't shit. care. Who gives a fuck? You don't have to care about history. My You're be- friends with EV now. <laughs> My best pal is EV. So, oh, how about uh, I know it should be. Uh, it's Dave Matthews. He's the other guy. Awesome. Of course, Dave Matthews is the third member of the evil trifecta. Dave yeah. Matthews, the same Dave Matthews that was a big fan of apartheid <laughs> in his home country of South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> If you listen to the word, hip on bimbo, black should go back to Africa. <laughs> Don't drink out of my water fountain. <laughs> what? <are you> Jim <laughs> Crow had some pretty good ideas. Satellite. Take all minorities and shoot them into space. <laughs> Who do, who's going to build that wall? I say we get the Mexicans to do it. Oh, my God. Did you guys know that they're performing at the Trump rally? <laughs> Crash into me, you unlicensed spick. Yeah. And I turn into... Oh, oh. there it is. Just some live. Everybody don't forget. Oh, <laughs> good on Banana Peel on uh, Twitter for making the new album cover for Andy Newman, Beej on Me. <laughs> you gotta be, John Me. Everybody knows you gotta be, John Me. Oh, Randy Newman was the third member. What were we oh, yeah. talking about? It wasn't Dave Matthews this whole time. I'm sorry. It's Mark McGrath, Jason Mraz, and Randy Newman. And Randy Newman's a real jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dan, Dan, watch your back, because apparently John from New York's got a, a Mraz rumor. I don't know if it's going down right in the city, but but beware. All right. John, what do you, what do you got for us, John? Yeah, man, I'm from upstate New York, and uh, Jason Mraz came up here and did a benefit, did a private showing for a bunch of autistic kids. Yeah. And after everybody left the room, he just ran around and railed them on the nuts and cooch the ukulele. Oh, that's... Oh. Yeah. Breaking Bonfire News. We go to Twitter where Mike says he heard... Mike on Twitter, forgettable Mike, said he heard a rumor that Mraz goes around drawing dicks on the faces of coma patients. I mean, you know, will this guy be stopped? I don't know. That is classic Mraz. Well, I, 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 heard that, uh, I heard that ISIS only trains to Mraz music. 
<laughs> I'm not going to pretend I'm the guy who's going to do it. I'm not going to pretend I'm the guy if I see Mraz and I'm going to step up. I'll be honest with you. I'm just going to look like everybody else and just be like, I hope I don't get in this fucker's way. Yeah, look, I'm that, getting out of the way of that, that out of control train. I'll tell you this. I uh, said hello to him and then looked right down at my feet. And I, you never make eye contact with Mraz. I heard it's in his rider. Well, take your soul. Put it right in that Luke ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> He's like Shaolin, but with fucking ukuleles. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, we gotta take one more break, don't we, Jacob? I can already, I can feel Jacob's tension from four thousand miles away. I swear to God, Jay, ja, Jay, I swear to God, I'm not lying. He was mm -hmm. about to give me the break sign, Jacob. Am I lying? Were you about to do that? Oh, you were one hundred percent right, Dude, Jay. You called it across the country. You felt Jacob do that. I didn't even see it as you were saying, "Let's take a break." I looked over, and Jacob was like, kind of giving up on making the break sign. <laughs> <laughs> Two fists dissolved. <laughs> that is crazy. But we should do it. All right. Well, it's the bonfire. Hey, I'm Kevin Hart, and this is the bonfire with my guy, Big J Ogerson and Dan Soder. Hey, Jay, you still doing that weird thing with your hair that makes you look like a pedophile? Uh, if so, man, uh, it's not working. I think that's the. I think that's been the holdback. Whatever. Uh, I love you, man. But I'm reaching out for your poster on the wall of the comedy office. <laughs> It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder, and all the way across the country, it's my radio partner, Big J, who's in L.A. Oh, yeah. I hate being this far from you. He's also got his one-hour Comedy Central special live from Webster Hall premiering this Friday at midnight on Comedy Central. Set your DVRs, and then also listen to Jay on Unmasked with Ron Bennington Friday at 2 p.m. on Raw Dog Comedy Hits 99. You need to do both of those things and get your tickets then for Skank Fest. Saturday and Sunday at the Creek in the Cave in Queens. Go to creeklic.com. And if you buy an all-access pass, well, then you get to go to Big J's special premiere party Friday, June 17th at midnight. Do that. How about we talk about Dan Soder live, Cleveland Hilarities, oh. Cleveland, Ohio, June 15th to the 19th. It's a whole summer residency. See him three times if you if you can. It's like a Dave Matthews tour. You got to follow him around the whole thing. You got to see the whole thing. Yeah. yeah if you, if it's you like come a, in, it's like a fish, a fish residency. Yeah. You come in uh, show four. You're not going to know what happened. I'm going to have to catch you up. There's seven shows. It's cost a long <laughs> way. And by the way, you have a guarantee from me and Dan. A hundred percent different show every time. No <laughs> jokes repeated. I will never repeat a setup, a premise, or a punchline. All different. All material that I've had worked out, ready to go. I, you know what? I blew that hour on Comedy Central. I was like, no, I'm going to save it for Cleveland. My best hour. Yeah. Show five. You know what? Cleveland. I'm going to go out there and half-ass this one because I think yeah. the people of Cleveland need deserve what they need to see. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Oh, I'm worried. What happened, Scott, buddy? Scott, Scott, Minnesota. He's, He's made his way to Minnesota now. Great Lakes region. That's. Oh, my God. Scott, what do you got for us, buddy? Hey, I heard that Moran's is a tooth fairy and he'll steal the good tooth. And he knocks out the rest of the cheap this lady, and then she bags him. Wait, what was that? I didn't catch a word of that. Are you on top of a truck? <laughs> Are you Styles from Teen Wolf? Are you van surfing? <laughs> what the fuck was... I don't know what any of that was. Do we lose him? We lost him, Lou? Yeah. Oh, we lost him. Well, thanks for the call. Uh, well, hey, this is breaking news. We actually have breaking... Thank you for the call, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the call, but we have breaking Raz news from Twitter. Dominic at Grindhouse Dom says, actually, Mraz finds terminally ill women and pregnates them so that his children have to deal with loss early and grow up motherless. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so Mraz. That is so Oh, Mraz. my God. That is classic Mraz. Yeah. It's, if ever there was. It's pretty obvious. Uh, Stephen Arizona does say that John Mayer is a third axis of evil member, and he might be right about that. John Mayer does not, but he's, I do, I have enjoyed a John Mayer song or two. Nothing that was a hit ever. Um, yeah, he ruined my night hanging out with Dave Chappelle, so I'll never be a fan of his. Because he interrupted you and Dave Chappelle? He got, Why that awkward sit down with him and fucking Katy Perry that one time at the, yeah, at what, the comedy store? So wait, what happened with that? It was, uh, I performed, they were in the, the room when I performed. Yeah. When I got off, uh, Noam, the owner of the comedy store, came up, and I, I had to go around the corner. I was still hosting karaoke at the time. Yeah. The corner. And he goes, hey, they come over. He goes, it was uh, John and uh, Katie. They want to meet you. They, they they thought you were really, really funny. 
And he's like, you got to come sit down. I go, oh, no, I got to kind of get over to, because I didn't want to do this because I'm very awkward in those situations. Yeah. Which having, most people, I guess, probably are. Praise, like, yeah, having praise heaped on you isn't a good thing. Normal comedians aren't good at having praise heaped on them. It's, and it's just weird and from somebody. I don't know them, and, and they're going to be very assured of, the, of themselves. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, those are the two of the it, most it, assured people on earth. Uh, yeah, so it's just like, I, I just didn't want to do it really. Not that I'm, nothing against either of them, quite honestly. John Mayer's actually, I did see him in concert because he gave everyone at the cellar tickets to go watch him at the Garden. And, and what a fucking amazing guitar player. Yeah, that guy's an amazing guitar player. He really I is. mean, I'll spread, no I'll, spread rumors, I'll spread rumors about him all day. I'm just saying that he is like, he's an amazing guitar player. Yeah. Um. And Katy Perry, you know, whatever. It's nice to look at. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> I I've enjoyed a said, song or two. You said that like an old-timey boss. Yeah, you know, she got some yams. Uh, look, at, look, at, look at the gams on his name. Oh, she looks pretty um, good. But he, uh, they asked me to sit down with him, and I sat awkwardly. I don't feel like they wanted me to sit down with them necessarily. I think they just wanted to just say, you're really funny, good job. Yeah. Let's all move about our day. But Noam's like pushing on my shoulders almost to sit down with them. And then like, oh. okay, if I, if I had my, if I was... Better in those situations, I would have like taken a picture for my daughter or asked her to sign something for my daughter. You know, that would she would have loved that. Yeah. Um, or take a picture of me for my daughter, whatever. I just go, this is what I do. I go to Katy Perry, I go, so I <laughs> have a Chris Farley show. I'm like, so do you like New York or LA better? Oh, that's so funny. She's like, she's like, oh, I like them both. I, I, there's, there's a lot I like about both places. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I never thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I guess you're right. So, <laughs> do you always pee sitting down, or can you stand up too? Jay, how did so, you? So, if we're talking muff, are you baldy, or do you think you got a little something? Can I see it? Can I see it? <laughs> I just want to see it. Can, can I see it? it? Uh, can I see it? The, can I see it? The, uh, I know we're here, but can I see it? Just under the table. <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> the uh, the ex that I dated, the wealthy girl's friends with her. Really? Yeah. She's like, I'm friends is with anybody Katie really fr Is anybody really friends with Katy Perry? Can you really, can anybody uh, fucking lock her down? Uh, I don't know. Friendship, I don't think so. I don't know. Baby, she's a, baby she's a firework. <laughs> <laughs> I know who she wasn't friends with because no one's friends with, no man is friends with Mraz. Only beasts are friends with them. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's no way you can't. You, you can never truly know him. You can't trust him like a hyena. He'll I heard. I heard. Mara, I heard. Moraz gave Heath Ledger a hot dose. Oh, he was hanging out with him. That's crazy. You said that. I actually gave him a hot dose. And then he. And then he. And then he said, if the Olsen twins told anybody, he would kill their parents. That is insane. Because I. Uh, my mom says that uh, when I showed her a picture of Jason Rash, she goes, yeah, that was the guy that took care of your dad right before he got sick. And I was like, I knew it. I knew Jason Raz infected my father with cirrhosis. I, my dad didn't drink. Gary didn't drink that much. If you show a picture of Jason Mraz to any child, they just start peeing their pants in fear. Yeah. They know. They can sense what he is. If you put a picture of Jason Mraz down on a church floor, it will burst into flames. <laughs> it's true. I've heard that. Let's go throw holy holy water on Mraz at a concert. Merkface heard one. Uh, Merkface, what do you got? Uh, Mraz was the guy who got Christine really drunk that night, and then she <gasps> said all that stuff. Oh. That was... Oh. I was going to say he kept handing her shots. I thought. Do you think he was was it, was he impractical jokering her where he had a little thing in her ear? And he's like, mm -hmm. "I'll say that Jay's. I'll say this dick's bigger than Jay." She's uh -huh. like, "Okay, you got him, Mraz. Hey, everyone. I heard your ex actually took the money to buy the PS2 for Mraz when you were younger. <laughs> <laughs> Mraz got a PS2 that day. Yeah, you didn't get one. Mraz got one. I also heard uh, this is like a crazy story. But Merkface was telling me that back when he was working Blackwater overseas they used to have a song to keep the american soldiers away that would say run run don't play uh jason mraz can come now any day hoping that he would stop <laughs> the outside influences of merc face and his mercenaries 100 percent true i heard i heard jason mraz is krampus oh that's a good point i heard krampus was based on jason mraz <laughs> he comes take the bad kids away yeah uh it's weird that Jigsaw was Mraz's teddy bear when he was a small child. <laughs> it's crazy. This is crazy. Pure evil. That man's pure evil. I heard he gives out haunted curios to fans, oh, and it ruins cool. their lives. I heard he's a real estate agent that only sells uh, haunted properties and doesn't tell the people that move in. <laughs> 
His ukulele picks are made of razor blades, and he whips them at the crowds. Oh, that would be, that's just a hilarious thing to do. Wait, pull this up. The song is so... Is this Jason Mraz? And I think it's going to be a long, long time. So much I miss my wife. He sing he uh, sings this to kidnap children as he before he fights them. Oh yeah, all of his music is luring music. It lures you into something <laughs> like a siren. There's probably a pleasant thing happening over here if you want to follow me. Do you like light sugary snacks? <laughs> hey, would you mind helping me put this couch in my van? Oh, the lotion gets it gets the lotion or it gets the hose again. <laughs> Wait, was she a great, great big fat person? I'd make love to me. I'd make love to me so hard. I'd make love to me so hard to this sweet soundtrack. Oh. Goodbye, horses. <laughs> it's just so funny to hear his voice. <laughs> just saying all the things he said and then hearing his voice. I heard if you fall asleep at Jason Mraz's house, he grabs your chest hair by fistfuls and rang, yanks it out. <laughs> yeah. He puts his foot on your stomach and yanks your chest hair out with both hands. Yeah. Mm. The guy's human garbage, from what I understand. I heard he's not even human. I heard, he's, I heard he was built in the laboratory. <laughs> yeah. If you pull off his face, there's a lizard under there. He's, he's a lizard man. This, this song, he actually wanted to do his original song called Lizard Man, where he changed his rocket man into Lizard Man. And I've got a couple kids in a trunk in my basement. Right down and I don't think, I too fun. And they're not going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm gonna get high, I'm then a kill him one at a time. <laughs> I'm a lizard man. <laughs> I'm a lizard man. Lizard man, murdering kids in front of each other. <laughs> lizard man. He's the opposite of the Blair Witch. He makes them watch yeah. each other. Oh, that's that's actually all the demos of his songs are just screams of children that he's murdered. <laughs> he just sends it off and goes, Hey, Ricky over in PR has a sound. <laughs> uh, Jason, I'm, I'm sorry, man. We love you. We've been with you since 96. You know we want to foster you as an artist, but this is a CD of children being brutally murdered. Yeah. Can that's... you... Do can you do can you dial back the kids' screams a little? I mean, even, there, in, in posts, in posts. And again, you're the artist, and I don't want to say what to do or when to do it, but I just feel like the album "Waiting for My Rocket to Come" could be a little bit different if it wasn't uh, pure child rape. Jason, take this for what it's worth. I I'm a company guy. I'm a guy who puts in a suit and tie every day. I'm not the artist here. I'm just saying it may be a little off-putting to have the screaming sounds of children on fire in the background. It's just much. It's just you can hear their skin crisping. No, no, I hear you. I get that it captures the vibe of what you're going for in the song, but still... Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? There's I'll give it an, I, I, I gave it another listen, and I'm, I'm saying, let me let, wait, give it a second here. Okay, this is some finger snapping stuff. Yeah, it's just it's a, it's it's real strong. Oh, it's we got strong. more. We got more breaking Mraz news. Oh my God! Jim, Coming out of where? On Twitter, Jim McMenamin says that Jason Mraz went to animal shelters in his home state of Virginia to adopt pit bulls that he'd supplied to Mike Aww. Vick. Oh! Yeah, that's a twofer. That's a twofer. Pre-jail Mike Vick. And by the way, can I just tell you that all of the signs of his evilness have been pretty much there. Uh, like, let's say the 2001 album, the E minor, E, P, and F, which I think stands for the evil minor in every person in fuck. I don't know and why. fuck, yeah, fuck just had to be there. But look at some of the title. Look at some of the titles. The Darkest Space. Oh. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. Yeah, it's under the floorboards. On Love in Sadness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just mm -hmm. pretty much means he's going to kill you. He's going to make you fall yeah. in love with him, that he's going to kill you. Here's the one. Gonna, it's definitely, I think he titled this ironically. It's called Love is Real. No. He's like American Psycho, except he ties you up and kills you to his own music. Funny story about You Make Me High. I wrote it, high on mescaline. I had a pregnant woman bleeding out in front of me. I stomped her head in with a Doc Martin steel-toed boot. Hey, Ron! He turned around and catch an axe to the face. <laughs> it's not going to eat itself. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, who would have thought we would have talked about Jason Mraz?
We went here. I wanted to tell stories about our my flute and wine drinking days of the EV, my new best friend. Well, isn't the beauty that we get to do that when we're back in the studio together? That's right? true. We have a fucking we have an awesome awesome uh, pre record uh, yeah. for you guys coming up on uh, Wednesday that we did with. Uh, Craig Gas that you're just going to love. That was so fucking fun. That was a lot of fun. And you cannot forget to make sure to check out Big J Okerson's one-hour special premiere this Friday, live at Webster Hall on Comedy Central at midnight. Uh, I was there. Oh, yeah, this, this, is our, this is our last promotion of it live. Yeah, yeah, I'm out here doing all kinds of shit. But, guys, uh, make sure you go check it out. Live at Webster Hall this Friday, uh, midnight at Com- on Comedy Central. Fucking unbelievable. I can't wait to watch Please it. Do. And I was Thank there. Thank you, Danny. And then also listen I'm to... I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm really, really excited. I hope people, uh, Dude, I hope it people was, dig it. It was fucking incredible. There's no way people aren't going to dig it. It was hilarious. I, there was time... Yeah. Uh, make sure you check out Unmasked with Ron Bennington. Something else I was at that was awesome. Jay, also uh, an amazing night, yeah. It was an incredible interview. That airs Friday, 2 p.m. on Raw Dog Comedy. Hits 90. Make sure you check that out. Both live at Webster Hall and Unmasked with Ron Bennington, Big J. It's the week of Big J. All week, we are praising the hilarious Big J. And then get Skank Fest tickets. They're available at creeklic.com. Festival is going to be at the Creek in the Cave uh, Saturday, June 18th and Sunday, June 19th. All access passes are going to grant you access to watch Big J special at the premiere party Friday, June 17th at midnight. That's a fucking day. Yeah, I'm yeah, and you can catch Dan Soder at Hilarities Cleveland, Ohio, June 15th through June 19th. His summer residency. He's doing a ton of shows out there. Make sure you get tickets at DanSoder.com. Buddy, I fucking love you so much. I love you too, man. And uh, I can't wait for the special to come out. I know we got a pre-record on Wednesday, so I'll just say it live. It was so fucking awesome. And we're all excited. I love you. Jacob Thanks, Schoen everyone. Uh, oh, also check out Big J's Comedy Central Radio Takeover. That's Friday at 5.30. So on Friday, put on some fingerless gloves and get ready to go. Because it's Big it's J. It's going to be a long day of party. Big J all day. Big J all day. Or day. This week. Christine, keep, Christine, keep my pussy warm. <laughs> yeah, she just gave me a thumbs up and then a wink, <laughs> which was weird. Uh, yeah, campers, we'll catch you Wednesday. Peace.